So my blueberries are getting ripe. Mine's the late barren blueberries, so they don't get ripe until later in the summer, July and August usually. This is the last week in July, so they're right on time. I've had a problem last year with the birds getting them. So you can see I've, I've added some decorations to try to ward off the birds and it's actually worked. It's actually worked. I've not seen birds in my blueberries, so that's a good thing. The bad thing is my blueberries didn't do as good as usual this year. We had a late, late, really cold snap. Uh, well, it wasn't that it was that late. It was that it had been so warm previous to that, that my blueberries all bloomed out. Well, then the weekend of Corey and Austin's wedding, it was really cold. In fact, so cold that it snowed, <laughs> snowed on the day of her wedding. And that frost, that late hard freeze really damaged the blueberry blooms. So I don't have that many blueberries this year. Thankfully, I have um, a friend down the road, a neighbor who had has blueberries and he's more down lower, not as high up as we are. And even, it's a strange thing about climates, even, as, even though he's my neighbor, just the difference between his house and my house, his blueberries were not affected like mine were. So I've been getting blueberries for him, from him. And in fact, I've got enough that I'm gonna make blueberry jam today. But this morning, Corey and I are out here and we're gonna pick what blueberries we can from my bushes. <laughs> a little, I don't know why we got great, a little green one, but then um, we seen there was a big old snake skin going right across the jars at the second location we went to. Yeah. There wasn't no snake there, but I think there was a big one. You have to do it just like this, with my arm in the way. Okay. So Corey and I have picked all the blueberries outside, which sadly this year did not turn out to be many. But thankfully we have all the ones that our, our neighbor gave us. So we're going to make some jelly. I've, well, we've washed them, and now I'm seeing stems while I'm sitting here. I try to be very careful and get all the stems out, but I obviously did not. So we'll have to... There's another one. I was, trying, I was so careful. I thought I got them all. So we'll have to keep looking for those. So what we're making is actually blueberry jam. And I learned this recipe years ago in a cooking class that I took. It's very simple and it can be kind of, it is, there's one, it is so simple that it can kind of be increased or decreased. The original recipe there that we did in class just made, I don't remember, it was just a very few number of little jelly jars, little half pints. But today we've increased it with the blueberries that we have on hand. So this is how simple though it is. We've got 17 cups of blueberries. That's a lot. That's a lot of blueberries. We're going to use six cups of sugar and eight tablespoons of lemon juice. And that's all, all we're going to use. So we're going to add all of our ingredients to a sauce pot. We're going to bring it to a bowl, kind of stir it frequently as it cooks. Then we're going to reduce the heat and let it cook for about 10 minutes. And you can take a potato masher and kind of, or the back of a spoon and kind of mash up the blueberries to kind of get them to release their juices. And that kind of depends on how, how thick or the texture, I guess, of how you like your jam, how, how much you want to do that. And then we're going to pour them in our jars. We've got our water going, so we're going to be sterilizing our jars as the blueberries are cooking. Now this is a jam that sometimes it can take maybe a day or two for it actually to set up to get really thicker, like when you first put it in the jars, which a lot of jelly I find is like that, whether it's jelly or jam. When you first put it in there, you're like, oh, it's so runny. 
and then you look at it the next day or even the following day and you're like oh it did just what it was supposed to it's just that it's so hot when you first put it in the jars that sometimes it takes time for it to actually actually cool down so I will put that original recipe that I had in the cooking class in the description below so you can see how uh, the measurements for it which is much smaller and then but as I said me and Corey kind of increased it because we had such a surplus of blueberries from our friend okay Corey's gonna pour all those luscious blueberries into the pot for us kind of hard to do it is it's because the colander's so big blueberries other than watermelon blueberries are my favorite fruit favorite favorite fruit okay here's your, here's your other stuff here's the sugar Corey's going to put in oh the sugar and then the lemon juice and then she's just gonna stir it all up and we've got the stove on about medium and let it come up to a boil it's not easy I'll give you a workout it give will you an arm workout and as the pot begins to heat that sugar will melt and the blueberries will begin to release their juices too that'll make it easier yeah can't really stir it so much as just flip it from one side to the other until you get some of that liquid yeah. going. Then it'll start, start melting good. It's already got some liquid at the bottom, so that's good. Doesn't that just look delicious? Mm -hmm. And it turns that sugar so pink. It's, it's pretty. I could just like eat a gallon <sighs> of blueberries by myself every day. I, I know. love them pretty good good for you too I sound like granny when I say that I love them yeah <gasps> I'm plum crazy about them that's what she says she says that about green beans though yeah she is crazy about green beans <laughs> you never meet a lady who loves green beans more than she does she's all about the green beans Now you can see that it's really starting to get liquidy and it's much easier to stir around. It only takes a minute for it to really start to get all liquefied. Look how pretty that sugar is though, it's so pink. This would be like really good as a topping on vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do they make blueberry ice cream? I'm sure they do. I'm sure, yeah. I've never had any, but I bet it would be good. Of course, I can never really think about blueberries without thinking of Sally. Oh, no. So when most of my blueberry bushes, well, Corey says Sally, most of my blueberry bushes come from uh, one of our friends. He was actually Miss Cindy's friend. Then we met him. He became our friend. But his name was Solly, or is Solly. And he had lots of blueberries that he just tended with such care. And they were just amazing. They did so good for him. Mm -hmm. And I, we loved them. And we would, in the summer, look forward to going to his house and picking blueberries. He would let us pick. And then at some point, he offered to... Actually, he brought them out here and helped me plant them, if I remember right. He brought me some of his cuttings, and so all those years, these years later, that's where most of my blueberries are from. I have one that your daddy, that Matt brought me one time. I remember I worked at, was working at the college. I worked in several different little, well, I worked at, well, I did work in several different departments over the years, the different places. But at this time, I was in the marketing department, but I was out there in the front, Corey, you know, mm -hmm. before I got an office of my own. Mm -hmm. And I remember I looked up, and he set, <laughs> set a big blueberry bush right Aww. on top of the counter right above my head. That's sweet. Yeah, so that's one of them. And then I have one or two that come from Hubert, Hubert Kirkland. He was a Hubert Kirkland. friend of ours that we used to dance with, and I interviewed him one time. Me and Pap went and visited with him. He was a wood carver, or he is a wood carver, I guess he still carves, and he gave me some blueberry bushes. 
That's sweet. Okay, now I think we'll just let it continue to cook until it comes to a boil. So now we've come to a boil, so I'm going to turn it down and we're going to continue to cook for 10 minutes. Set me a timer. And then turn it down slightly. And then I'm going to kind of mash the berries with my potato masher. Smells so good. I wish you could smell it. Although it's not as good as blackberry. Blackberry is my favorite. Okay, our 10 minutes is up, so I'm going to turn off the heat. Corey's helping me get jars ready, and I'm going to start loading our jars up. Mm, it's going to be good. nice to be able to do this with Corey. Yeah. It'll be some goodness for me to put on my shelves, but also for her and Austin to put on their shelves. Yeah. Of course, I've got great memories of helping Granny, but I also, I mean, it's kind of bittersweet when you think about the days that, um, uh, berry pickings and berry cannons. People would, in, in the old days, there was so much to put up. They would laugh about our little seven cups of blueberries. They would have so many gallons and gallons that they would pitch in to help each other. And of course, anytime you have a lot of people, that means, you know, a lot of fellowship. So a lot of camaraderie. So it turned into whether it was corn shuckings or berry picking or berry uh, cannon, any kind of thing like that really turned into a you know, a, like a fun time because people would get to visit and get together. Of course, I'm sure there'd be good food like there always is. So it kind of makes me miss those days. Of course, there's great things about today too. Mm -hmm. But it is nice that Corey and I are going to be able to share in this bounty and know that we work together to put it up. Yeah. Of course, Corey's helped me in the past lots of times, uh, probably when she didn't want to when I made her, I made her and Katie, but it's different when you're doing it for your own house. It's a different feeling. I think Corey would agree with me. It's not just, oh gosh, I got to help mama and then I can go do, go swimming or go play or do whatever. It's, yeah. uh, it's different when you're doing it for your own pantry. It is. I would say I even enjoyed it back then, but... It was different. I just kind of had the attitude of, well, mom and dad, you know, they know how to do that, so why do I need to worry about knowing how to do that? But now, if I do have my own house and my own pantry, I do want to know how to do it. Right. Makes it different. All by myself. Give me a little one, too, when you get time. So we got the jam in the jars. It looks really pretty. Still kind of liquidy right now, but it'll cool down. Then we have what's left over right here. You can see it's already started kind of to, to get firmer because it's getting cooler since it's out in the air. I'm gonna, of course, have to taste it. Corey's trying to be really... Well, I'm gonna eat lunch soon, so yeah, I don't wanna spoil It's almost lunch. dinner time, so she's about to eat. But I know it's good. Yeah, but I, I can't wait. I've got to try it. Let me taste some on the spoon. Mm. Mm. Very good. Mm. 
It's really good. Very good. I need a, a glass of milk to go with it. We love to eat the blueberry jam. Of course, you could eat it on a biscuit. It's really good that way. Really good on a little foldy, like Corey and Katie would call them, with a glass of milk. Um, you know, peanut butter and jelly. Use this as the jelly. So many different ways. It's also really good to make, if you've seen my video about hand pies, either the fried ones or the baked ones. It's really good to use as a filling for those. While Corey and I were making it, while we were waiting on the... Uh, kind of the mixture to come to a boil. We made another thing out of our blueberries. I don't know if you can see them. It's very simple. You're going to taste one with me, Corey? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's just chocolate and blueberries. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> mm. That is so good. Really good. So all I did was melt the chocolate, put the blueberries in it a few at a time, and put them out on a plate. Very simple. Now, I learned that recipe. I've never made it before from one of my friends, Janet Smart. Mm -hmm. Janet is one of my online friends. Ever since I started the Blind Pig and the Acorn back in 2008, somehow we found each other and we followed each other's blog. She has a great blog, Writing in the Blackberry Patch. And then she's a writer and we just had so much in common. So over the years, we've stayed in touch with each other. I've never got to meet her in person, but I would love to. So she, she has a YouTube channel, and I will link to it below, and I'll link to the video of how she makes the blueberry chocolate candy. It's so good and so simple, so no, easy. Be, and dark chocolate. Yeah, if you, and this is dark chocolate. You could use whatever chocolate, though, that you wanted to. But Janet is a wonderful writer, too. So I've got two of her books I want to tell you about. So I'll start with this one, the first one, Cooking with Family which is kind of appropriate for what we're doing today, mm -hmm. Recipes and Remembrances. So this is her cookbook, and I'm going to put the information below where you can find them. Um, and it's got everything, great recipes from her family. I've made some of them. They're wonderful. And then all the way in the back, and, and along with them, she's got little tidbits about her family and about growing up in Appalachia. She's from West Virginia. Then it goes on to a section where it's not talking about food, it's talking about other things like plantain oil, how to make that, tablecloths, um, an apron, how to make an apron. Then in the back, she's even got some cooking tips, traditions and superstitions. And then I like it, she's got some blank pages so that you can write down, you can take notes or you can write down your own favorite recipes. So that's a really, it's a really good book, Cooking with Family, Recipes and Remembrances by Janet Smart. So Where the Stars Grant Wishes is a fiction book. It tells the story of Jonathan and Lucy, um, really a heartwarming kind of little romance, but um, not so much, not overly romantic. So it's more about just their life in Appalachia. Of course, this was in days gone by, so it kind of tells, the, tells their story, but it is really nice, really well done book. So if you want to check it out, you can definitely do that. I will leave the link for it below too. So I hope you enjoyed making blueberry jam with me and Corey. Leave a comment and tell us what your favorite jam is. We really like blueberry. We like peach too. Mostly I make jellies though. We love like the blackberry and uh, strawberry. strawberry and mulberry and all those. But uh, for jams, I really enjoy the blueberry because there's no like seeds in it. That's one of my, my favorite things. And of course with peaches too. As always, we hope that you'll continue to drop back by and help us celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of putting up food for the winter.